Hey guys, Paul here, the Impulsive Culinarian. And in this video, I wanna tell you about my gluten-free minced pies recipe. Minced pies. What says holidays better than minced pies? And when's the last time that you had one? This is a recipe that I really had to dig out of the archives. I haven't had minced pies in forever. And so one thing that I researched about, and I always research my recipes to find out the true t traditions of where these come from. And you know, you can get that canned stuff or jarred stuff. There's the, the filling, right? The minced pie filling that you can get in the grocery store and it's ready to go. And what I, what I found out when I was researching this is that the original version of minced pies most often contained meat, right? It was based on some kind of, uh, there was a gamey meat of some sort that was stewed in with all of those dried uh, fruits, the raisins and whatnot, the currants. And when it would cool down, it would leave a layer of fat on the top. But if you've ever done canning, right, or uh, jarring jams and this kind of stuff, some of the people that do this, all right, they use wax to seal the jar. And this is sort of, it makes, it all makes sense, of course. When you were making minced pies, that fat layer would congeal when it would cool and it would raise to the top and it would seal the ingredients inside so that they could sort of meld together and the flavors could join and you know just make this incredible flavor of minced pies and that to me I like I have to reproduce this all right I had to give it a try in the traditional way and that's why I decided to use short ribs this is a kind of cut of meat that literally melts when you stew this for any length of time an hour or two it literally melts and you know the end result of this minced pie filling that we're making from scratch it has such a luxurious texture and the flavor of the meat that's in there it's so subtle but I, I now believe that it is essential in order for a true traditional minced pie to have that same kind of Christmas appeal and so the other things that you're going to find in this recipe very standard stuff you know we're looking at the uh, the cinnamon the ginger and the cloves are the, the standard holiday spices right the zest and juice of an orange and a lemon a lot of people use the candied stuff I decided to skip all that because making candied you know uh, peels just to put it no forget about it just use the zest and trust me the flavor is all of there and apart from that, you got apples, you've got sugar, you got spiced rum, very good spiced rum. And of course, coconut oil, because we want to keep this dairy free. Now, the, the pie crust that I'm using, all right, I'm going to include in this recipe instructions on how to make a basic pie crust. But if you want to check out the video, I've got a link to my gluten-free, dairy-free pie crust video that you can check out. And without any further ado, let's get with the holidays and make some gluten-free, dairy-free minced pies. All right, so starting with the magic ingredients, ingredient for this minced pie recipe, half a pound of short ribs. These just literally melt when they're cooking in the pot. So you want to trim off all of that excess fat and the bones, of course, and until you're left with just the marbled meat, which you're going to chop up into small cubes so that, you know, really help it melt in the pot. Half of a cup of golden raisins, half a cup of dried currants, uh, and also you want to get three quarter of a pound. That's around two medium sized apples, which you're going to peel, core, Chop into small cubes around the same size as the beef. Quarter cup of coconut oil. A cup of golden cane sugar. You can use regular sugar if you like, but I like to use golden cane sugar. Fair trade. Three tablespoons of spiced rum. My captain. That's the good stuff right there, buddy. And a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, just to help bring out the flavors. Half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger. And a quarter teaspoon, you know, or so of ground cloves. That's the magic Christmas spice right there. And last but not least, you want to get the zest and the juice of one plump orange and one fresh lemon. Let's get cooking. So get yourself a medium-sized cast iron pot. I love to use these. They're so handy, especially with a tight-fitting cover. They have to have a tight-fitting cover. And if you don't have one, a medium-sized saucepan will do. So you get in your coconut oil and your cubed up and deboned uh, short ribs. Basically, everything goes in the pot, guys. So basically, the apples, the currants, the raisins. And once you've gotten it all in there, you want to start off by bringing the pot up to medium heat. And now that's just to bring it to the initial boil. As soon as it starts to get to a gentle boil, that's when you want to put on a, a tightly fitting cover and bring the heat down to medium low. Guys, you're going to be simmering this mixture for three hours. So you really don't want to take a chance, a tight fitting lid so that all of the flavors melt together and every bit of moisture stays inside the pot while it's simmering over low heat. 
So now it's time to make some tart shells, some gluten-free, dairy-free tart shells. So you get yourself a quarter cup of brown rice flour. Try to put the weights here to help out. And a quarter cup of masa harina flour. That's Mexican white uh, corn flour. Quarter cup of white rice flour. Quarter cup of tapioca flour. And lastly, a quarter cup of potato starch. Now, not pictured here, guys, is the one half teaspoon of guar gum. You can use xanthan gum, but it's more expensive. So guar or xanthan, whichever you prefer. An eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of organic honey and an organic egg. So all of these ingredients, including a third of a cup of coconut oil, are going to go, and that has to be, you know, refrigerated. If it's melted a little bit, you want to keep it nice and solid. Get all of those ingredients into your food processor. And once you do, you're going to blitz it all together with that egg and the honey. It should be just the right consistency, a little bit granular, but still ready to be put together. So get yourself a good sheet of wax paper. Take that mixture out of the food processor and start rolling. So that it doesn't fly all over the place, you know, squish it together into a little bit of a ball and then start with your rolling pin just to get it on its way to flatten it out into a disc. And at some point you're going to find that the dough starts to stick to the rolling pin. And that's where I like to flip it onto another piece of wax paper. And then I start to make my sandwich. I get everything in there in between the two so that the rolling pin can actually do its work. Now you want to get this as thin as possible uh, but you still need to be able to make the shapes, you know, cut them out into rounds to put them into your muffin tin. So, you know, basically, if you've got a piece of uh, wax paper that is rectangular in shape, rolling it out as much as possible to start should do the trick. And then you get yourself a 12 muffin tin and you start, you know, with a cup or a glass or something that's around the same size. I'm using a large, you know, Collins glass here. And so you just sort of take each round off gently, carefully, put it into the each round of the muffin tin, and then you can place it in there. So once you've exhausted all possible <laughs> way of getting rounds out, you squish what you've got left back together and start rolling again. And repeat until you've got 12 fully formed tart shells into the muffin tin. Now, if you've done this just right, you should have a small handful of this dough left over in order to save for your tops later on. So here you go. Let's have a look at those nice shells. They don't go all the way right up to the top. You're going to get those in the freezer until you're ready to cook. Now, that last remaining piece of dough, you're going to flatten that out as thin as you possibly can, okay? Now, leaving them thick doesn't help you. This gluten-free pastry, it doesn't brown as well as normal pastry, so getting it as thin as you can is the key. And so why I, you know, I want to make small circles. So that's why I use a shot glass. Okay. I'm not taking shots. I'm just making some desserts. So I get my 12 little rounds. So same idea. You're going to keep on making rounds until you've almost got a dozen. Keep on flattening the leftovers and presto, I've literally got nothing left <laughs> out of my pastry dough. And those are going in the freezer as well. So after three hours of simmering, you can see that it's all taken on this beautiful golden brown color. All of the dried fruits have plumped up. So I take that off the heat and let it cool. So the next part of this is to let this concoction set. We want it to cool in the fridge. So get it into a glass container, something that you can put an air, airtight lid on top of. All right. And get all of the, the solid materials down so that it's going to refrigerate and cool off. And that coconut oil and the fat from the short ribs is going to solidify and gel. And that's what you want it to do. So you leave it in the fridge for at least a few hours, preferably overnight. Now, the longer you leave it, a day or two, the flavors even meld even better. So that's what the end result is. After a day in the fridge, that coconut oil and animal fat or beef fat has just congealed. And that means that you've got nice sealed flavor inside. So you take off all of those pieces of fat and you scrape off all the good stuff. Make sure not to let anything go to waste. And once you're done taking off all of the fat pieces on the top, you can discard them, compost them, of course. And then you're left with nothing but this beautiful, flavorful, minced pie filling inside. And this is exactly the right amount that you're going to need to fill up your 12 muffin tins. So you want to get your muffin tins out of the freezer. It's time to fill up some tart shells. So if you spread it around evenly, uh, you should have just enough to make sure that you fill up those sort of half height uh, tart shells. 
And once you're done, of course, you want to take those 12 little rounds, thin circles. That's the traditional way. You can get fancy with the artwork, guys. If you're more artistic than I am, and I'm sure many of you are, you can get, you know, as fancy as you like. So you get those in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. And guys, look what happens when they come out. They're nice and beautifully browned. Those rounds on the top, they brown because they're nice and thin. Just fantastic. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Lots of great content coming out every single week. Three videos every week. In fact, one based on gluten-free, dairy-free recipes. Of course, as you know, you're watching one right now. The second video that you'll see every week is based on some kind of international cuisine, be touring the world, the sky's the limit, concentrating on all kinds of different classics, putting the icy twist, my own version of those. And the third recipe that you're gonna see every week is a healthy recipe because guys we should all be living our best life possible my name is paul the impulsive culinarian i'll catch you in the next video